so around that time, which was the fall of 2019, um, I was also starting to feel really have some strong convictions about education um, that I had had some really just profound, tremendous, ex extraordinary experiences on this rocket team at Vanderbilt that were outside of the classroom. It seemed like not only that, but like everyone at SpaceX who was successful had experience on a hands-on team like this outside of the classroom. And SpaceX was just directly recruiting from rocket competitions, from Formula SAE competitions, um, people who had hardware experience on realistic real world projects that had, you know, complexities of manufacturing, scheduling, cost, performance. Um, they were very interdisciplinary in nature. Those people at SpaceX had these really good collaborative skills. They knew what it was like to, to communicate when there's uncertainty on a project. They knew how to communicate when they didn't know the answer to something, when there were big risks, when they did something wrong. They they knew how to own up and fess up when something was wrong. And they knew how to see the big picture on a project too. They knew how to, to zoom out and see how their role fit in with the overarching goals of the project or, or the company in SpaceX's case. That was just night and day, I think, from people who didn't have experiences to develop those skills in a collaborative team setting on, on particularly a, a hardware oriented project that had an interdisciplinary nature and a technical element for, for maximizing the, the performance and, and some of these business questions of, of cost and schedule, uh, which are just always looming. There's also just the ethical questions, the safety questions, risk. Uh, anytime you're building something larger and complex, you sort of have to face issues with managing risk and safety and, and ethics and things like that. And I think that's that's essential. I thought, well, shoot, the normal classroom, you're just sort of memorizing things from textbooks and then being tested on them. And then you move on to the next chapter and you're just kind of going through this process of regurgitating memorized facts isn't providing the, the type of formation that our kids deserve, that that children really thrive in, that's engaging for them and where they can grow up to be excited about the possibilities of using their minds and their knowledge and their understanding to solve real world problems and to make people's lives better. I thought, well, whew, you know, I started feeling called to leave SpaceX in LA and try and switch into education here in Chattanooga. Chattanooga seemed like to have a, a fertile environment for trying to develop a method of education and for me to learn how to be a teacher. So I told my boss that, uh, you know, sadly, I would be moving on and, and starting this new endeavor. And, and he was very supportive in that and, and offered to help in any way he could. And so I started to switch gears and think about creating an education startup, a nonprofit or an LLC or whatever it was going to be and learn, you know, what was going on in the cutting edge education, you know, who was doing good work in education and how could I learn from them and grow and, and create, have my own voice in the world of education. So I visited Ad Astra, um, which is now Astra Nova. I visited on SpaceX's campus and met Josh Don, and he was just incredibly encouraging of me trying to do what I wanted to do here. Um, and Josh Don is the principal of Astronova now. I know you, you've met Josh. We moved out here uh, to Chattanooga and, and loved it. The pandemic hit immediately, which was crazy. A lot of the in-person schools closed down. I had no idea if my business was going, my startup was you know, going to just be dead in the water. I didn't have any contracts to do any work yet. When the pandemic hit and most schools didn't have time the time of day for you know trying out this new educational program um it was kind of a frivolous thing you know they want to know can our students are our students going to survive is it safe for them to come to school and so that was a, a tough season thankfully i got a, an email from josh don at astronova who was like uh, yeah we'd love for you to do an, a class here at our online school astronova i think you'd really do well and i said okay great opportunity and so that came through and I said, yes, I'll do this. And I taught you and a bunch of other students one day a week, first educational experience. I started to get contracts and programs set up at, at many other schools here in Chattanooga locally. I started to work with people through sort of private one-on-one -on -one tutoring on Zoom. And I started to run summer camps, uh, boarding camps where students could fly into Chattanooga and stay at one of the local schools and then some day camps for Chattanooga students. So the mission was always to connect students to learning in sort of a SpaceX-like learning environment. I, I called it Tiger Team. Tiger Team was this term that NASA had coined in the Apollo era to refer to these small elite groups of problem solvers that they had thrown together to solve their toughest missions in the shortest amount of time. And we had some Tiger Teams at SpaceX uh, to solve some of these really tough problems. Uh, I, I just interviewed uh, for my podcast, uh, Sanjeev Sharma. He was the first I had heard of it. Uh, he and some others were thrown together on a team to solve uh, fracture 
which was just unbelievably technical and figuring out how we were going to reuse these rockets. And they were seeing just insane environments on on reuse uh, for the loads that they would experience when they were coming back through the atmosphere and the heating and the wear. We wanted to fly these things 10 times. And it was just like a nail biter from an analytical perspective. Because you're like, this is just so severe. You know, how damaged are these parts? How can we certify that they're going to be safe to fly? We needed a Tiger team for that. And so I just adored that concept and that idea. I tried to duplicate that for students. And that's what I've been doing in education ever since. Everything is project-based, collaborative, hands-on, somewhat open-ended, always grounded in first principles. I know that's a buzzword, but it's just so important is getting down to the fundamental physics of things. It's not everything. If you can't look at a technical problem and distill it down to some simple, some simple equations, simple knobs to turn and levers to pull and identify what the the biggest lever to pull is to make your project successful from a performance perspective. You're just sort of shooting in the dark. Anytime that's possible, it's so powerful. It's not the whole thing. It's never going to take you all the way. There's plenty of other things that can go wrong on the uh, process side, the relationship side, the ethical side. But it's it's one critical element, especially for students to get to experience that for the first time, to optimize a design from from a fundamental physics perspective and also see the limits of that where where uncertainty comes into play where they have to manage risk, where they have to take risk, wise risks, has just been a grand experience for me. While all that was just, was glorious, I realized that I had figured out one piece of the education puzzle and, and there were probably, there were 99 more that I wasn't aware of when I started working with students. And so I really was seeking out a, a professional community, people that I could be with in person that could help me get acquainted with with a career as an educator, figure out how to handle just the the day-to-day -day challenges uh, that that students and teachers face. And I wanted to be with the same group of students in person every day. And so I, I when a job opened up at one of the schools I was working with here in Chattanooga, one of the ones I really liked, um, who had a solid rocket program that I had going, had great resources to support the, the type of learning that I wanted to inculcate in my students, I, I leapt at it. Um, I had to learn how to teach math. So I, I do have some pre-calculus courses that I teach there, mostly to juniors, but I teach my engineering course. That's my flagship class. And it's it's matured a lot since I, I led you through it, um, a, a similar thing at Astronova. Macaulay's been a really fertile ground for me to develop my, my pedagogy. And I do have great peers there and incredible students I get to work with. I really miss you guys from Astronova a lot. One of a kind experience and just got to meet incredible people like you there. But thankfully, I still get to keep in touch with you and with some of the others who were awesome. And uh, that's a real privilege for me. One of my favorite bits of being in education is watching what you guys get into after uh, I get to be with you and staying in touch. Um, so thank you for offering. Thank you. So I, I'm full time at, at Macaulay now. I teach uh, five classes. I do activities where we're doing innovation stuff in our in our innovation lab. Um, it's a boarding school in Chattanooga. Uh, boards like ninth through twelfth grade, which is the upper school, and then there's a day school. You can go as a day student, as a high schooler, uh, or as a middle schooler. We have about a thousand students, and it's an all boys school, um, which is an, a very interesting feature of it. I taught some really bright girls at Astronovo. It's a shame that they couldn't come board it. Uh, it is great to, to be in person and, and get to work hands-on with the students and relate to them, eat lunch with them. Uh, some of the summer camps to help students get opportunities like that as well. You believe it's changing education? So I, I mentioned earlier in, in my story about why I started Tiger Team. Just I had such a profound experience with uh, the learning on the fly at SpaceX. I was seeing the, the experiences people from SpaceX had had and I loved my Vanderbilt rocket team. And I thought that was where I really learned things was on that rocket team. Do I think it's really changing education? There are a surprising number of people in education doing really amazing work. Also, this Tiger team thing is not something every single kid needs. I think it's something an ETO needs or certain types of students who have certain interests. There is a massive diversity of students with, with different needs, different interests. While for, I can say for so many of our, my alumni, I've pr provided an irre, re, irreplaceable experience and program and shaped their life in a certain way. There need to be one million of me's in the world doing, making great educational experiences for different kids. Every kid truly is unique. Um, and that is just an amazing thing to wrap your head around. And so the, the teaching process has to be relational. You have to come to know the student. You have to come to see what makes them tick and and adapt what you're trying to do in the real time, especially if the world changes too. You know, I wasn't thinking about AI in 2020 uh, when I started Tiger Team, but now it's a really pressing topic for a, a student entering the workforce. Yeah, I'm thankful that, and, and a lot of people are doing similar things to what 
Tiger team hopes to do. There's a lot of great project-based learning institutions, teachers, master's degrees, PhDs, schools, all doing great STEM project-based stuff. Um, so it's it's comforting to me that I'm not alone. It's comforting that I don't know everything and that uh, there's a lot of people on this same trajectory. What are the key principles you teach your students? Wow. The key principles I teach my students, really important is like a sobriety and a humility before engineering. Engineering is a something where you are you have a lot of power and influence over the world. It's, it's almost like you're you're playing God because the technologies we're developing give us so much influence. We're really zooming into the intricate laws of physics and nature to make something. And, and sometimes those things can go very wrong. Um, and so we we try and look at all the different engineering disasters that have come when people have not spoken up, when there have been issues, um, when people have cut corners or been lazy or cowardly, uh, all the different disasters in space flight, some of the recent Boeing crashes on the 737 MAX, the Ocean Gate submarine, the Titanic, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, um, the Hyatt building crash. There's just endless numbers of horrible disasters at the hands of engineering that's not done well or conscientiously. And so I want students to, um, to take seriously the responsibility that comes with engineering. Trust one another, forgive one another. Um, I see so much students, um, well, I screwed up so much as an as a engineer and people forgave me and gave me second chances. And if I didn't get a chance to, to mess things up or try something and fail or challenge myself in a way where I knew I wasn't gonna be, um, I wasn't gonna come through with a perfect product and have people around me that were gonna support me regardless, I would have not ended up where I am. So I, I try and you know teach them to take a deep breath, to be forgiving, to grow more comfortable with uncertainty, um, to zoom out and see the big picture of their project, including the big picture of their teammate as like a, you know, a human being um, who who's as important as the thing they're trying to create. Yeah, I want them to learn to take wise risks. I, of course, want them to grasp physics equations and engineering equations and the technical side that would allow them to optimize the design, um, see the people in their community that need the most help. Um, those who just necess can't necessarily help themselves or speak for themselves or, or who are living with disabilities or are living in an oppressed condition. Um, I want to orient their eyes towards, towards where there's the highest need, not necessarily where there's the highest amount of money or the most impressive job. I, I obviously want them to be enthusiastic and passionate, try and bring to the table. Um, I want them to listen well to others be empathetic. Uh, so, so much of it is about the process uh, over just the product. So much of it is about character over just content. Um, I really, I'm, my, my goal is to get into the heart of engineering. Both the human element, the relational side of things and the technical side have to be emphasized. And I think oftentimes just the technical side is emphasized and that won't do, that's not, that's not Tiger Team. What was a memorable moment for you when you were teaching at Astron River School? Well, I think oftentimes you would call in and you had done some experiment and you would show us some, some rocket you built in your basement or something that's on fire. I think, uh, yeah, times like that where I gave a lot of freedom to students to develop a project, experiment with it and not have a lot of constraints. Um, that was one of the big advantages of Astronova. Uh, they gave a ton of freedom to me as a teacher. They didn't burden me with a lot of, uh, you know, learning targets that you have to hit. They didn't have grades or things like that. It was all about trying to create experiences for, for you students to be creative and to grow. Um, seeing times that students did that in my class. I remember a student in, in May of 2021, they flew me out to LA to launch rockets in the desert with some of the students. And I had students who pulled out sort of this cold gas thruster with a solenoid valve. I think it was Leopoldo Gastel. It was just incredible to see the things that students made, some of the joy that students brought to the teams. Yeah, oh gosh, there were some great team names. I don't remember some of those. Yeah, being out in the desert with everybody in uh, in LA was was a very memorable experience. Uh, my buddy, my, one of my other old roommates, Quinlan, like drove me out to the desert like three hours with me and these kids in his van. He's got this like big blue van. And it was just a crazy thing to be back out there with the SpaceX folks doing that. What advice would you give us students that are entering in the field of rocketry? I think that's a, that's a great question. It's a very important one. It's a lot of different things. I think one is seek seek out challenges for yourself, seek out environments where you can be challenged, things that really seem nearly impossible, or you look at them and you're like, how in the world would I do that? But I want to do it. I think seeking out challenge is, is essential. And the key to doing that is, is being in a place where uh, the stakes are pretty low, where you can take on one of these seemingly impossible things, be allowed to fail and learn from that failure. 
um, be, be in an, a, a huge feature of this is the people around you too. Um, a supportive environment that will let you fail, will help you back onto your feet, will not, you know, shame you for being a failure of some kind or who will, yes, yeah, support you as you experiment through things that are really challenging, technically challenging, especially there's concepts that you, you really have to fight to wrap your head around, especially on the engineering side. I think my advice would be even in your normal classes, your math classes, your English classes, uh, history classes, if there's something to you that's really challenging, challenge is good for its own sake. And I think learning is really good for its own sake. I feel like I wish I had taken all of my classes more seriously when I was growing up and, and in high school, and I would be better off now for it. But uh, especially with the engineering stuff, um, with some of the technical equations that underlie a lot of these technologies, really fight hard to understand it, really make sure that you have your head wrapped around it, and then find places where you can apply those things. Super important is surrounding yourself around great people. Find find a, a community of, of thinkers, of, of engineers, um, where you just love the energy there, where people are, are kind to you, where you can be kind to them. Regardless of the environment, always be kind to everyone. Um, there's never an excuse, there's never an engineering excuse uh, to be rude or dismissive to someone, even if they don't have any help to you in developing your technology, or maybe they're getting in the way of developing whatever you're trying to develop. But it is never an excuse to look down on someone or be rude to them or judgmental of them. Um, that's a common mistake I think engineers can make just because engineering does give us so much power and is so technically difficult. But look for that good, wholesome, caring environment of people who are passionate, who are thinking well, who are really getting after it and are embracing challenge and embracing discomfort. Um, I think getting uncomfortable and chasing good challenges, things that seem impossible. I think that is what it's all about. Finally, just on like the pure aerospace engineering side, is like one of the things that I think is most important for engineering is, especially with a new design, is getting getting that design into a what I would call like a flight-like test configuration for a, a flight-like test uh, as quickly as possible. I think you learn so much from sort of real-world testing of a design, so much more than sitting around trying to, to well, pencil push it to death um, and, and try and figure it all out just on paper. Um, if you can build something quickly and be reflective about what's going well and what's not going well, I think that is absolutely essential. Just a really good piece of advice. I would share actually my old boss, Steve Berger. He would say, work the right problem adequately and not the wrong problem well. That's good advice.